This is the team of Island Air. Every day, they risk everything. The Kodiak Peaks and Wicked Seas make the island the world's most treacherous place to fly. These are the tales of Alaska's ultimate bush pilots. Ready, set, go. Get comfortable. All right. Hunting season is a busy time in Kodiak, Alaska. He's the guide. We're busy, we're backed up. In a 12-hour day, Island Air can make up to 22 round-trip flights. What's up? Hey there. How are you doing? At this time of year, do you guys need help? Much of their work is transporting hunters around Kodiak. Come on down. Should be a good day for hunting. Your chariot awaits. An early cold front is descending. He's our guide. And three hunters venture out to beat the weather. They plan to hunt Sitka, black-tailed deer near the Uganic Cannery, a half-hour plane ride northwest of the basin. But the frigid temperatures may alter their plans. Oh, wow. Are we going to be able to land? I will let them know, and we will go from there. I just got a call from Uganic, and apparently there's ice in the bay. The ice on the water by the cannery is thick, making a float plane landing impossible. Hi, James. I just got a phone call from Pam Pingree. There is ice right out in front of the cannery, so we won't be able to land there. The best we could do is take you to Quartz Creek. If the float plane drops them at Quartz Creek, they have to hike two miles through thick brush and across rocky cliffs. OK, we can walk. You, you can walk? Have you been out there and hiked that area? Uh, no, this would be my first time. All right, thank you. Thanks a bunch. Yep. Well, these guys are determined to go. For me, it's kind of a, should we send them? Yeah, my guys, split up. There's that question in my mind if they're going to make it. Trekking two miles on this bear infested island through unfamiliar territory is tough enough. On top of that, a monster cold front is heading right for Kodiak. In Alaska here, you know, weather's a matter of life and death, and we've got a pretty good storm moving in on us now. We're getting ready to launch a weather balloon into it and see what, uh, what the winds aloft look like and what the temperature profile is. Tower, National Weather Service request permission to launch the weather balloon. National Weather Service balloon launch approved. Wind 0501, Anarchist 26. So this is our balloon inflation room. This is where we fill up our balloons. They're made of natural latex. Craig fills the balloon with 1,500 grams of helium, which will keep it afloat for 90 minutes. Up, up and away. Launch this balloon. Go! A data recorder and GPS are tethered to the balloon. And there you have it. This is my favorite part of the job. Balloons collect temperature, speed, and wind data. Critical information when making flying decisions around the island. This is the track of the balloon right there. The balloon is doing its job, and that makes my life easy. Island Air relies heavily on meteorologists. But even when clear skies and calm seas are predicted, they aren't guaranteed. Squalls barrel into Kodiak with little warning. I was coming down a pass had some hunters on board, and it was all sunshine behind me. And I could see a squall up ahead of me going down through this pass and the water. And all I had to do was land where I could see at the end of this bay. Dropped 
drop my hunters off, turn around, and head right back to town. Started flying back up that pass. My brain kept telling me, it's good ahead of me. Well, long story short, it never did get good. It got worse. And that squall came around, and I ended up on a beach. It built up to over 40 miles an hour, the wind speeds and blowing snow. Thinking I'm gonna lose my airplane bobbing around in the beach environment. But that was a good lesson for me, is don't ever think it can't or won't. <laughs> you fly every day knowing it will, and it is. Despite Kodiak's temperamental weather, hunters flock to the island because of the abundant wildlife. Just like incredible. It doesn't matter what the weather is. You cannot be disappointed. Karen Seaman has been hunting in Alaska for five years. But this is her first trip to Kodiak. Sitka black tear, obviously, only here in Alaska. So thought it would be a great chance to be able to hunt something I've never hunted before. Taking pictures of the sea otters, they're like so cool. Although she's excited about her adventure, She's nervous about the island's infamous brown bears. All I ever hear is when you shoot blacktail on Kodiak, it's like a dinner bell for the grizzlies. She has good reason to be nervous. A few days ago, two deer hunters were mauled by a Kodiak brown bear just a couple miles from where she's headed. Kodiak brown bears here are known for being the largest bears in the world. Population-wise, they're at an all-time high right now. Luke Randall is a hunting guide at the Afognak Wilderness Lodge. He's had his own close encounters with bears. He happened to be on the beach. The bear was kind of confused, and then it started walking straight at us. It got to about 25 feet. It smelled us. It was locked in on us and started charging. Hunting season brings a mass of sportsmen through island air. The wide variety of wildlife on the island is extraordinary. It's teeming with black-tailed deer, mountain goats, and Kodiak's infamous brown bears. Yeah, blew hard yesterday. Luke Randall is a seasoned hunting guide who's had his own up-close and personal experience and it got to about 25 feet. It smelled us. It was locked in on us and started charging. I shot it when it got to 12 feet, just to save everybody's life. Oh, yeah. man. Not a story that hunter Karen Seaman wants to replicate. So she's headed to Sportsman's Warehouse to get some advice from the experts. Now, tell me about these, uh... Uh, Kodiak brown bears that I, <laughs> that I well, hear about so much. So heard, what do you think I need? I would definitely uh, make sure you have some bear spray. All of the brands that we carry here at Sportsman's Warehouse are all great. My favorite, I like the counter salt here. No, you, you haven't had to use it, right? I have never had to use them. What's your ammo situation look like? Pretty good. I'm using a 308. 308. So how many boxes do you think you're going to need? Boxes? Well, let's hope I only need one bullet. You've got your ammo, you've got your gloves, you've got your bear spray, you got your snacks. Let's go get you a license. OK. Can't wait. Oh my gosh, it is pouring. All righty, Karen. Hey, hey. Peter. Peter, are you hey, pilot? Karen. I am the pilot. Oh, yeah? Pilot Peter Rosendahl will be transporting Karen to the Afognak Wilderness Lodge a half hour north of the basin. Before they take off, she has a few concerns about the weather. So are we flying? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah? We just talked to them. They're calling a couple thousand feet with uh, good enough visibility and 20 knot wind, so we're, we're good to go. <laughs> OK. Fantastic. Good thing I brought my waterproof mascara. Bay Island Air will be on order shortly. We're ready. 
for you. It's a little bumpy. There might be a little bumpy. Make sure your seatbelt's tied tight. I'm sure you've flooded worse. Oh yeah. For some people, this wouldn't be good visibility, but this is pretty much a normal day up here. Guiding Karen on her first Sitka blacktail hunt is Luke Randall. Lovely weather we're having. Good for deer hunting. Is this good for deer hunting? Yeah. They can't hear it. They can't, yeah. Okay. I just had uh, people leave this morning. Oh, did they? A couple Suc hours ago. Successful? Actually. Yeah. Yeah. Really good. Got a ten and a half foot bear and a real nice buck. Oh, you got a bear? You went bear hunting as well. Yeah. If you're out hunting for deer or elk, you still have to be bear aware. I look over my shoulder all the time when I'm out. One more risk for the hunters hiking to Yaganic Cannery. We don't even know what we're getting into until we get there, so. We'll definitely have an adventure. We get pretty gnarly, I think. I definitely wouldn't do that hike. During hunting season, the pilots of Island Air work 12-hour shifts. In the course of just a few months, they'll fly hundreds of sportsmen all over Kodiak. Getting ready to start our deer hunt. These hunters are tackling a risky hike. The bay is iced in, so we have to get off here. And we're headed for that cannery down there. For some, Hunting is a necessity in this remote part of the world. The meat they harvest today will sustain them for the entire winter. Heavy. The whole terrain's all steep. Steep, steep, steep. I'm ready. Happy hunting, guys. Emily has asked the hunters to check in with her daily. Should something go wrong, she will be their only lifeline to the outside world. It is definitely cold outside. When you're getting ice in the ocean, you know it's freezing. I, I worry about their safety, um, what we're going to find when we go out to pick them up. That's really steep. A lot of rocks to climb over. Still hours later, they're still not there. Ugh, treacherous. It's tough. It's just kind of steep. All the other yard. And there's a lot of alders. I just want to get going for the dark. <laughs> the two mile hike is taking longer than expected. The hunters were scheduled to call from the cannery. It's been more than six hours, and still no word. I hope to hear from those guys soon. On the other side of the island, Karen is ready to tackle her first Kodiak hunt. She's pretty confident she'll get a Sitka black-tailed deer. What she's not sure of are Kodiak's mammoth brown bears. Since I probably smell like bacon, let's get rid of that scent. Luke Randall, longtime Kodiak hunting guide, will share the experience with Karen. All right, All right. let's go find a buck. All right. The forest here, it's hard to believe, but it's like, you know, think Hansel and Gretel walking through the woods. You are just stepping on moss, huge big pine trees, and it's just so quiet. that you cannot even hear the deer. So you're just like walking very quietly. And then you realize, wow, the bear probably walked just as quiet. So the whole time I'm like, OK, looking around, making sure there's no bear around. Because bears are like ghosts in the forest. They hear us and see us way before we see them. So their natural incl inclination when they hear or see us is to run. Or hide. Or hide, OK. Yeah. 
Luke uses a rattling tool to call the bucks. But no luck in this location. I think a lot of the deer are going to be on the other side of the ridge because of that hard wind the last two days. So. It's a doe. We spooked this deer. It runs past the next one. Dang, dang, dang. So we got to be like dead quiet. Then we went another couple hundred yards, and uh, Luke spotted a buck. Looks like he's right there, and I'm like, where? Right out there. Okay. Look with your eyes. You should come this Shoot way. that tree in your way. Come on, let's go over here. Okay. See him? Yes. When he walks out right there, get ready. Load, load, load. Right there. Shoot. Hunting season is a chaotic time at Island Air. The team of pilots hauls a multitude of sportsmen all over Kodiak. Beautiful bear, isn't it? So where'd you hit it? It nicked the heart. Caught him right? Right here. I love to see a successful hunt. <laughs> Island Air feels personally responsible for the hunting parties they transport. We had three hunters go out the other day. We were supposed to drop them off at the Uganic Cannery, but we weren't able to get to the Uganic Cannery because of ice in the water. We dropped them off two miles before the cannery, so they had to hike in. It's not easy to get in there, and especially when you're trying to carry a load of gear in. I don't know how it went and not hearing from them, it worries me a little bit. They may not have made it to their destination. On the other side of the island, Karen Seaman and guide Luke Randall are hunting Sitka black-tailed deer. Found him, got set up. Are he? Shoot. Took a shot. Right over his back. Oh, reload, reload. He's was not I moving. high? Was I high? Yeah, you hit high. If you're gonna miss, miss high. And he just kind of stood there and was like, what was that? So it gave me the opportunity to jack another shell in, realize I needed to go low a little bit lower. Oh, you smoked him. Right. And was able to take him with that shot. Okay, I'm gonna go check on him. Looks like you got him. OK, come on. Headed down the hill and came upon him, basically right where I had shot him. Oh, yeah. Oh, you smoked him. Good shot. That's a gorgeous buck. Oh. Beautiful Sitka. Wow, look at him. Nice and wide. Oh. He's a really big body for here. He's pushing like 180 pounds. Wow. Look at that. It look was a nice three by three, and Luke was excited. So you know, obviously, I was excited that uh, you know, I took a, was able to take a great deer. Congratulations. Thank you. And then he's like, well, we'll get it here. And I'm like, we're going to get it here? She had been hearing all these stories going around Kodiak about uh, bear mauling that had just taken place. I'm like, OK, so like three days ago, there was a mauling on deer hunters. So now we just have to worry about bears. And so she's pretty worried about that, rightfully so. All of Kodiak is known for the bear attacks. Of course, the whole time I'm really nervous, and I'm just pacing, and he starts gutting it. But Luke is not concerned. Bears haven't been really introduced to that, where when they hear a gunshot, they think of a gut pile or a deer that they can have. They either don't know what the gunshot is, or they are afraid, because they know it means death. With no bears in sight, Karen packs up her trophy and carries it out herself. Wow. Successful day. Woo!
this was my first trip to Kodiak. Totally awesome, and it's amazing. These beavers and Island Air keep this island and everyone around it running. Bob, I'll see you in August when I'm back. See you in August. Uh, we'll be here. All right. See ya. Thank you. Success all around. Emily finally has news from the hunters at Uganic Cannery. They made it to the cannery. I'm really glad to hear about that. I didn't really expect to hear that that was going to be a success. They did go hunting and they got a deer, so we're going to go pick them up tomorrow. It's keeping your ass alive. <laughs> It's doing a safe job. It's taking care of those people in the airplane, getting the job done. You know, the attachment to the machine, their tools, they have no value. But the people and how you interact when you, when you need each other, making a small air taxi in Alaska work. It's, it's been a good life.